Uh, this is the NeoBooks call for Monday, November 13th, 2023. We've just missed some entertaining uh, Zooming while driving, and we're about to do a demo with Pete showing us Airtable as a way to do a publishing calendar for our new Substack. Um, I'm going to reshare my screen just to the web browser real quick. Um, and I'll apologize, I haven't set up, uh, <clears throat> um, I didn't set this up as a demo. So let me look at uh, one of the bases that's, um, this might be a good one. Yeah, I don't know if that is a good one. Why don't I just, I, I'll just start from fresh. Uh, so um, uh, it, it has a tendency to, well, it likes to do these uh, fields to get you started. I'm actually going to like, Cut them all down. Um, so uh, we'll call this short name. Uh, uh, about new books. So this would be um, maybe author. We'll call this Jerry. Um, and we'll put a date, uh, uh, I'm going to put a wish date. Okay, so I wish Jerry would publish this uh, on the 23rd. Um, maybe we would have a thing called tags or something like that, uh, subjects. Um, I'll make this a multiple select, uh, and we can have, uh, I'm going to call this meta. Uh, it's also, um, uh, uh, because I'm doing this on the fly, this is going to be kind of weird weird stuff but um maybe we have um we every thanksgiving we have a you know that's a, a kind of topic that you have so jerry can add thanksgiving stuff um maybe it's also about autumn uh, and about blogging or something How about, oh, you already, I, I was going to say future of media would be a good topic. Future of um, media. Cool. And we'll probably want to field a different field for the permalink once we publish and the actual yep. public pub date. Um, Uh, so um, I'm going to go a little bit advanced here real quick. You probably kind of get the point, and you, it's also probably kind of confusing to look at the things. Um, uh, let me add another one here. Um, Call us December 6th. Um, so you see that I've got a selection of the things I can select here. I'm going to type a new one, which is Markdown. Um, and for Jerry, I'm going to select Thanksgiving holiday, blogging, future of media. Um, so as a simple demonstration of the, the relational database part I was talking about, 
uh, let me change this to be um, a link to another record uh, on a table called authors. So now uh, it looks the same kind of, uh, but if I click on Jerry here, um, or actually let me do it. I think I double click on it. Um, let me do, do it a different way. Uh, there's another table here called authors now, um, and it's pre-populated with this from the other table. So Jerry is working on about neobooks. Pete is working about on neobooks publishing process. Uh, Jerry's email address is uh, associate at gmail. Pete's is Kaminsky at iStory. Um, and so on and so forth, right? Um, oops. So uh, right away, it's easy for me to actually roll. This is a good way to do that. Um, you know, as, as you're doing this, I was just thinking that if you bring it up every week, you can coach us a little bit on how to use it if, if people decide that this yeah. is the way to go. You know, yeah. five minutes each week, mini, or or if, if um, this platform already has videos, uh, training videos on how to use it. But what's I, still I not clear, sure. yeah, well, one thing that's not clear, and you have the knowledge, is, um, you know, the, the additional benefits. Um, what you see is the additional benefits. I just don't know what the scope of benefits are compared to. You know, like a, a really good one is... Um... Uh, and, and to come back to it, I, I am totally fine using Google sheets. Uh, it's just like, um, it's, um, uh, it's kind of like using a bicycle instead of using a car, you know, it's like, you know, okay, we can, we can all fit on the bike. That, that's fine. Um, so this is something I, it's got, I think it's got better support for, um, text fields. Um, so this is a you know a fairly long text field. Um, it's got good support for uh, data types. Um, it's got uh, if you want to do this kind of uh, category thing, it's really good at that. These uh, you can do single selects and multi selects. Um, uh, it would be easy to do a, um, a Kanban board here. Um, I'm going to add this field at the end. It, it actually belongs in the middle someplace and we'll drag it over maybe. Um, uh, um, actually, let's do a couple. Um, I don't think we're going to get the full benefits that you've experienced with it, but one option for people to decide is whether we just go to you know, Google Sheet to describe or whether to do a period of prototyping this to see whether people feel it's better and whether it's worth the energy to, to learn something new or not. I'm open. I'm undecided because I can't make a decision one way or the other. Let me, uh, let me see if I've got another Kanban boardish thing real quick. Um, Each table should have a Kanban shortcut. This is, this is a pretty good one, actually. Uh, this is a, a like a random template that I, I set up once. I haven't seen it for a long time, so we'll stumble around it. Um, let me duplicate this so I can mess it up. Uh, so. In this scenario, this is a project tracker for a little company or something like that. Um, so, you know, kind of like over on the um, uh, on the editorial calendar, here's the name of, you know, the, the thing. Um, here's uh, kind of a qualitative thing from the last meeting. Um, so we've, we're trying to review some fundraising records. We're still looking for some of the records. Uh, Joanna is lead on it. Uh, this is in the finance department. Um, this pro project is at yellow status um, because uh, we're still looking for the records. Um, 
project size, life stage. Uh, life stage can be um, active, pause, backlog, zombie project, close. <laughs> so, um, so it's real easy to set up views over here. Uh, so I can see this is um, just a view of um, projects that are in red status. Uh, let's see what this is. Uh, it's got a Kanban board view. So this is a different thing um, where kind of like a Kanban board, uh, we can look at all the green things in one thing, all the yellow, all the red. So in a meeting, in a review meeting, board meeting or something like that, it's like, okay, we don't even have to look at the greens, the yellows, what's going on with this? Um, uh, looking for some missing records, Joanna, what the heck, what's going on with that? Um, are, you know, are, are we going to turn this to green next week? Um, and sea turtle is like, what the heck? Paul, uh, Terry, what's going on? Um, waiting on additional resources. Can we please get Terry some resources for this thing? Um, I would and, say if, if you're the administrator of this, um, I mean, just use what you're most comfortable with. Uh, it's it, this is totally a lot fair. of information and and uh, yeah, totally fair. You know, to do this side by side. I mean, make a decision, make a call, and we'll use it, and then we'll just uh, uh, you know, if you're setting it up anyways, you know, it's pretty easy for us to to, to dial in there. Yeah, um, really well put. Yeah. So you kind of get the idea. Um, it's got mm -hmm. a couple, the Kanban view thing works really well. Uh, this is a card view of each each project and you can sort and filter and customize these cards, yada, yada. Um, to, uh, uh, to Dave's point, it's easy to change these around. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what problem there was. It's also easy to look at these at, in expanded view. So um, uh, Jerry, I don't know if you saw it in the chat. Dave's got to drop off at the hour. So he's got two minutes now that we've burned it all on uh, air table. <laughs> Dave, any thoughts? Dave, bef before you leave, I just uh, I updated uh, the volume one based on the comments we made last uh, last week. So I just wanted to take you have a take a quick look at that. Great, thanks. And how, where do I, I get it through the, um, which channel do I go to to get to it? It's the, the Discord. Hold on. Um, Neobooks? We yeah. have a Neobooks channel on Mattermost. Mattermost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there is a, um, there is a fuel version there. So this is the, this is what I changed. Um, now, before the book started, started here, the story of soil, um, and I added in the, uh, I changed the name to Food and Agriculture Adaptations to a Changing Climate, and then I put an introduction in there um, that explains that we are connecting three stories into one, or three chapters into one right. story. Um, and then I did... Um, I did uh, put in sort of an an appendix. I didn't want to go through the whole book and then make specific ref references like you know the the dawn of everything page two hundred and forty five or so. I mean that's but here here are also what uh, Chat GPT has pulled from. You know these are the the uh, the key the key uh, references. So hopefully that's. Uh, that's uh, this now the 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 book itself is um sorry where um, I have some uh, some chunk in here the uh the story of soil is is on um the the neo book folder it, that's uh that's an OGM uh, uh, uh catch, um uh, not file um, so we have food revolt here, and then there's book volume one, volume two, volume two, and in here also you have individual articles uh, that that have been extracted from the book and used to go around, you know. And then here's the book itself, and this is the current version. Great. Okay. Hey, thanks for doing that, class.
All right, I'm going to hop. Good to see you guys. Thanks, Dave. Uh, anyone else with thoughts, comments on Airtable versus et cetera, et cetera? I'm That's in got a good point. Camp. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Stuart. Go ahead. No, I just said that I'm in classes camp. You know, whatever you decide is just fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you think it's got the benefits, give it a world prototype if we like it. And if we don't, we'll tell you. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, if it works out well, great. I mean, it seems uh, like so a great project management thing, a multi-dimensional project management platform. That's what it looks like. And I don't know how well Google Sheets can replicate that or not. So my, my take at the moment is that Airtable is dramatically more powerful than, well, I don't know about dramatically. It's way more powerful than Google Sheets. <clears throat> it's also something completely unfamiliar to us. And I don't know that it has any features. I don't know that why we'd be pasting long text fields into Airtable if we should be pasting them into Substack or, you know, or Markdown files or whatever else. But um, if we feel like learning a new tool, this is a great way to do that. And this is a power tool. So I think that's, uh, for me, the, the biggest reason to go with Airtable is that all of us would get more fluent in using Airtable. But otherwise, I'd be totally happy to replicate this in Google Sheets. I have the I have the inkling or the hunch that more of us will participate if it's on Google Sheets merely because it's absolutely familiar and there's no there's no hurdle at all. Um, I I think um, <clears throat> you made kind of a joke, Jerry, about uh, I, now I get to set up an Airtable. Should should I so desire? <laughs> I and you just Klaus and is, you just did. <laughs> yeah, Klaus is uh, Klaus is more to the point. Whoever is running the project management um, should use whatever tool they're comfortable with. Um, right. I'm probably not, I, I, I would love to do project management. I probably don't have a bandwidth for it. Um, so maybe you can kind of be the, the manager of the Google sheet and that's totally fine. That works fine for me. Um, and happy it's to not setting happy up to... the tool. It's actually managing the tool over the long term. Yeah. Right? It's, it's making sure that making sure that we're all using it and using it in some comfortable way that makes it useful. Um, we should also have a Google sheet, uh, of neobooks. It, it makes me think. Well, I'm thinking there's a neo. There's a markdown page that basically lists the neo books. I think I would like to use yeah. Massive Wiki for that yeah. rather than a separate spreadsheet. Okay, that's um, great too. Yeah. Okay, but, but and then I'm sort of heading that way with what I'm doing with uh, uh, the Wiki. We could we could keep the editorial calendar on Massive Wiki too instead of Google Sheets. That that winds up being harder for me because tables in Massive. Not I, with a my, table. Yeah. yeah. Mark that so it would just be just it would just be moving text up and down. Yeah. Eh, I I would rather yeah. be in a spreadsheet. November, just because the... December, January. Yeah. Yeah. Which would it, it, that would be the bluntest instrument. But even even actually then, editing a markdown page on GitHub is a challenge for some people uh, yeah. in this group. Yeah. And Google Docs is a no barrier thing. Yep. But I think I think Google Sheets is is a, a good answer. I'll set up a Google Sheet for this, and replicate what Pete just did, um, <laughs> and get it out to us. Um, anything else on this topic on editorial calendar, and Substack? Uh, we didn't talk about Substack much. We sort of raced right past it to Airtable demo and all that. So, um, any other thoughts about our use of Substack or uh, getting added to it, et cetera? I the so the editorial calendar is kind of a container. Um, the the act, the thing that we fill it up with is people's work. Um, so as far as I know, nobody here has, has volunteered to be <laughs> feeding the editorial calendar or especially the articles that need to be written. Um, uh, so may, maybe that's a thing to do to talk about who's willing to write what article when kind of. If if anybody, I think that's a good uh, good comment for now. And also, um, we can use this Substack even to experiment with the possibility of neo books. Meaning, I don't think someone has to have a right. a, a valid and confirmed neo book with a full table of contents yeah, exactly. in order to start posting uh, pieces to it. Uh, it feels to me like, hey, I I think I want to write a neo book about this. Here's here's a post starting, you know, opening that conversation, I'm comfortable with that. 
Yeah, the other thing is is what you were talking about earlier is sort of a meta conversation about neo books. And I think there's there's a lot that can be done there because that sets the template and trajectory for the future. So for example, if you were to write a blog post that you would share, you can you can share a pre um, you know, you can share a link to an unpublished article on Substack. So if you shared it to us in advance, for example, we would review it. We would come together, maybe discuss it next week. You record the session so you can see how things evolve so that you do a pre-publication, you do this, you update it, then you send it out to everyone so that when it's published, you've got lots of people who have ideas about what they can share. So it's a, it's a recursive iterative process over time. Um, love that. And you could even take the recording of that segment of that call and attach it yeah. back to the to the blog yeah, post. Ex and then exactly. And then and then over on YouTube, where I always upload all of our calls, I could add a link back to the Substack post, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. So yeah. For back yeah. and forth. Yeah, exactly. Like How do you go? create create different ways of networking and getting the message out? Because to me, the issue is how how can you create something that's organic, evolving, and never ending? You know what I mean? It's a complete learning process and drawing people into it. So it becomes a tractor for this particular, the different domains that people want to spotlight. Cool. And and also for me, neobooks is sort of a way of writing. It's a it's it's a little bit like writing wikily, uh, which is its own. When you're actually involved with a small community of people creating wiki space, wiki pages, uh, mm -hmm. you have to think wickily. And uh, that's different from just writing a, a, a book by yourself. And and this is that plus the Neobooks concept on top of that uh, and sort of reusability and modularity in, in different ways. So I think that, that mm -hmm. that's certainly content for posts, but it's also something we can practice as we do the thing that Rick just described. I'm, I'm happy with that. That sounds great to me. So will thoughts? you have a draft? Will you have a draft for us to look at for next week or not? <laughs> that sounds not. like a, too busy. That sounds like a good thing to aim for, and it doesn't have to be a huge long thing. So, oh no, 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 yeah. no! Quite to the contrary, it can just be yeah. you know, and then and sure, then the discussion becomes then it becomes a generative process. You're collecting ideas, and then you incorporate that into the next iteration, and it, it just evolves. Agreed. Um, Plex is coming out this this Wednesday, and then not again for three weeks. So, oh right, holidays and such. Um, no, it's uh, Plex is published first and third Wednesdays. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So every <laughs> two months, there's a a three week coincidence of the editorial calendar. Yep. Yeah, coincidence but, um, of the actual calendar. But but a quick you know new book and pointer to the first post in the Substack would be great uh, if we could get it for Wednesday. Okay, so that's soon. Cool. Um, should we talk about any? I have a totally random. Um, oh, good. Totally random thing. Um, actually, I have two random things. And then I'd like to get to a uh, new book publishing process to uh, nuts and bolts. Um, First random thing, Plex reminded me of it. I, I've been doing a thing. Uh, I'm, as you may know, uh, I'm uh, totally, uh, totally enamored with uh, Midjourney. So I generate hundreds and thousands of Midjourney images of all different kinds. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to get them published in more places. But a thing that I've been doing for people who contribute to the Plex, um, I've been sending a, a really pretty uh, image uh, for a month or a couple of months. Um, this, this week's uh, set went out with an offer to redeem an NFT of the, um, uh, of the image as well um, on a blockchain called Tezos, uh, which is a low energy, clean NFT thing to do. Um, uh, the art community there, um, it's been around for about two years and I used to participate in 2021, 2022, and, um, it's still there. Amazingly enough, um, they're, they're forming a DAO. Um, and, uh, so there's a whole like connection that that neobooks could make uh, into nfts and DAOs and things like that and i know nft and DAO are like really 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 dirty words 
Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not a pony in there. Uh, so there is actually a thriving art community. Um, uh, this is uh, the, the art community I'm talking about is this, a tiny little thing compared to the big famous ones. Um, it's also decentralized and open source, um, uh, sustainable, all those kinds of things. Um, and for trading little bits of, of things, uh, peer to peer inter-community, um, the technologies that got such a bad name are actually really useful. Um, so you could make an NFT of a chapter of a book, um, or you could make um, an NFT even for a process or something like that. And um, the thing to remember about NFT is it kind of means signed copy. Um, so the artwork that I sent to everybody, they have it already on their computer, but um, if they want to redeem a signed copy, um, they can say, hey, Pete, just tell me how to, you know, tell me how to receive this and keep it as a signed copy as well as just the, you know, the kind of like a, so it's like a signed copy of a book as, as opposed to like the PDF you have on your hard drive. Um, love to talk to more people about that. Um, the other random topic um, uh, coming from the world of AI, another dirty word, um, mm -hmm. the new That's hotness uh, in, in uh, chatbots uh, with ChatGPT is a thing called GPTs. They did a ballsy move, uh, uh, which is the way um, our friend Kyle Shannon uh, referred to it. Probably wouldn't have said it that way. But anyway, they did a, a, a bold move where they said, we're going to take the generic term and we're going to use it as our brand name. So uh, just in the same way that Microsoft has Word and Apple has phone <laughs> or App Store, um, ChatGPT uh, named their, their named a thing that people were doing already, um, AI chatbots. Um, they call them GPTs. The, the thing with GPTs is it's a custom I'm going to say tuned, that's actually quite not quite the right technical term, but I'm going to say a custom tuned chatbot that understands your corpus. So now um, this has, it's been obviously coming for a year and now they've just poof, made it available to everybody very simply. Um, now, if we ship a Neo book, we ought to be shipping a chatbot that goes with it. Um, and uh, so, um, you to to make a, a GPT, you load up the the bot um, with your corpus your corpus material with some custom instructions. Be friendly and polite. Be a little bit sardonic. Uh, know this, know that. Um, stay away from these topics. Don't stay away from these topics. Um, so a neo book should also have an attached chat bot, which lets people talk to the book essentially. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so let me know if you want more information about that. Um, there's, they're, they're actually super hot right now. So if you say, teach me, you know, I'll, I'll teach you how to make a chat, a GPT, or here's my GPT. You're, you're in the first 20,000 people, um, in six months, there's going to be a million of these things or more. Um, and, uh, it's going to be noisy and, and. And actually the way ChatGPT has always been a hard to use thing. It looks easy to use, but it's actually hard to use because you don't know how to use it. These, these bots are encapsulated ways to use something about a specific topic. I want to learn how to use a pressure cooker. Um, I need to know what the maintenance uh, schedules for my car are. Uh, I want to know, I want to learn how to fish. Uh, I am a new parent and I have health concerns about my baby and me. All of those kinds of things used to be a book and a website, and now it's a chatbot is, is the way that you're going to interact with that stuff. And instead of ChatGPT general purpose, most people will not be using a general purpose chatbot. They'll be using one of a million custom special purpose ones. So that's yeah, if, fact, way if I could just add to if I could just add to that, tomorrow morning I'm speaking with uh, Kent Langley, who's the uh, CTO of uh, Exponential Organizations and co-founder with uh, Salah, Salim Ismail. And he, uh, as I think he calls them book bots, 
which is, I, I think it sounds like the same thing. Um, and he did it for um, uh, Simmel's book on exponential organization with a second edition. And he's already developed this. Um, and so, you know, I was thinking, uh, you know, if he's available and you're willing, we could invite him to this meeting to talk about it because he's already done a lot of this work. Um, and he was ahead of the field when it started. Maybe, I, I'm not. I'm not in the tech space, so I have no idea who's ahead of who and who's beyond the cutting edge and not. But I don't know what your take has been. There's, there's a, the technology <clears throat> for this has been available, but not easy to use for, mm -hmm. you know, eight months, nine months. Um, and there were a bunch of startups actually. They were like, wow, you know, a bunch of. Uh, developers, Bill Anderson, our, our friend Bill Anderson was one of the developers playing around with the technology. You could cobble something up together um, and then it was a little bit hard to ship it. Uh, last week in their dev day, OpenAI just kind of wiped the table and they said, here, mm -hmm. it's easy to, easy to make these, trivial to make them, um, super powerful. It's hosted on our infrastructure. You don't have to figure out how to do anything except ask some, you know, answer some questions. Mm -hmm. So um, everybody has seen this coming and um, uh, it's, it's good to know that there are people who've been thinking about how to apply a book to this and mm -hmm. OpenAI has just taken the, the, uh, the barrier to entry from like, eh, it's a little bit of a pain to, it's, it's so easy mm -hmm. that you just like, you can't not do it almost. So, um, Another thing to note, I don't think we have to worry about this much with neobooks right now, of course, but um, a thing to know about GPTs is that um, any chat that an end user is having with your corpus is private to that user. Even the maker of the bot doesn't have access to those chats, they're private. However, anything that a bot maker has given to chat GPT mm -hmm. Um, uh, to kill to create this bot, custom instructions, corpus materials, things like that. All of that uh, through a trivial jailbreak. Um, anybody who has access to the bot can get it to dump all of that material. A, a super trivial jailbreak. Um, so we're at the stage of the game where OpenAI puts something out that's very useful um, and it's a little bit sharp edged because if you don't, if, if you're going, ha, now I can, uh, now I can uh, monetize all these books on uh, fly fishing that I've been saving forever. And now people can have an easy access to fly fishing knowledge that if you give that to OpenAI right now, they, they don't, give it to everybody they'll let you chat with it but it's very easy mm -hmm. for somebody to say uh you know hey chatbot tell me everything you know and it'll just like okay i'll tell you everything i know and just keep going so we don't have to worry about well, that with the neobooks because neobooks are public but if don't publish anything that you don't want you know on the front page of new york times through a, a gpt yet. cool uh Stuart in class then me yeah. So, um, so here's what I'm here's what I'm wondering as as we 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 discuss this. All right. So, um, I go back to what I think of as the as the purpose of 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 neo books is is to provide a publishing platform for progressive ideas and and give people the opportunity in some ways to contribute, add on, etc. I'm hearing a lot of stuff around um, ownership um, as an important concept and monetizing things. Um, and I'm just wondering how all of what we're talking about serves the original purpose. I, to, be, to be clear, um, I bring up private information and monetization because that's a lot of what's going to happen with, Ch with GPTs. My okay. understanding of neobooks is they're going to be CC BY or CC BY NC or something like that. Very open and not, not. I mean, we Jerry and I, I know that Jerry and I have talked about, and there should be a Kindle version. And it would be great if the Kindle version was five bucks or two bucks or whatever, you know. I It, it makes sense to... I, to I, if, it were, if it were my neobook, 
I probably would have the $5 edition. I'd probably have a $10 edition along with the $5 edition. <laughs> and then I'd have the, in the, in the description of those saleable things, here's the one for free. Here's the one that you can get, you know, probably easier and faster than downloading on a Kindle. So there it's uh neo books. I, to my understanding is not meant to be a commercial venture. Um, it's, it's not also something that we're going to shy away from potentially, you know, bringing sure, in some money, okay. but it's, it's yeah. much more like uh, contributions to a uh, open source thing than a money-making venture. Cool. That um, plus, sense? yeah, I, I attended the uh, attended. I mean, I looked uh, the, the at the Open AI presentation on all of these releases that just uh, came out a couple of days ago or so, and I have to revise my opinion on singularity here because uh, you got to be kidding me, kind of thing. But right? um, the the uh, um, but I'm looking at this more from a perspective of writing, right? because I have from the get-go, when I transitioned into 4.0, looked at programming the AI in the way that I wanted to, to look at the information I'm putting in. I mean, the questions I'm asking, you know, which is why I, for example, put in uh, uh, a, a morality guide, you know, uh, and and the uh, put in a, uh, the uh, uh, spiral dynamics you know, as a uh, as a guide, and I asked it to you know, respond with level of confidence about statements, you know? and so this new this new capacity here opens up a whole new field you know, of uh, uh, going further in this kind of customization. Uh, to what it is, it, it to the way that you want uh, the AI to look at your at your questions and and uh, and respond. So I'm more, I mean, maybe from from a writer perspective, you know, interested in how this uh, how this plays out. But it is, you know, it's a it's a big damn jump you now in in uh, in complexity here. And yes, it you know, it may make it easier, but it really puts the um, it puts the onus on you as a writer, you know, to frame what you what you want to talk about uh, in ways that you get an intelligent response. Because if you if you you know mess that up, or if you put in a criteria that's you know, that that may actually derail I mean, that, that may derail what you're what you're trying to get out of it uh, so the the uh yeah in one way for simple tasks you know this uh, uh makes it easier but if you go into really wanting to take a deep dive into what we know about uh you know very specific technical issues you have to be really uh, very specific in how you frame that no, so I just wanted to to to, to throw this in. Um, yeah, I mean, you have data analysis, game time, the negotiator, creative writing coach, and all of that. Um, these are all great things, but they don't really help you a lot to get into. So how uh, does this cover crop uh, business again uh, play out you now in in this complex food system? Yeah. Uh, Rick, you put your hand down, or it put this the system put your hand down for you. Did you want to jump in? Um, well, I, I just wanted to build on uh, some of the things that I've been experimenting. I, I'm fascinated you're using Mid Journey. I just started using. I'm a neophyte at Dali three, and what I've been doing is putting the question of my blog post and asking it to generate an image, and I, I provided a link there of one that it came up with. Uh, and visual images are incredibly important just to get attention. You have a good question, good visual image. Um, and I'm just playing with it. And, um, you know, I'd love to learn more about your experience of using Midjourney uh, about creating images that are captivating. So the one I just shared, I mean, I was just, there was a whole bunch of them. And I picked out this one and, you know, tweaked it a little bit and thought, wow, that, that hits the nail on the head for me. If you take a look at that, it's, uh, it's I was very surprised. Very surprised. So. 
how good it was. You know, I was just thinking that, that you know, sometimes even just stand by themselves, they captivate. You think, what that's that? What's that about? What's that about? You know. So um, I, I'd love to hear about yeah. your experience of using Mid Journey and creating images for blog posts. Um, if you've done it yet, that is. Yeah, I I have. I've played around with that kind of stuff. I uh maybe we should do a, you want to do a one-on-one -on -one call sometime Rick? yeah i'd love to whoa uh, yeah let's, <laughs> let's set it up um okay look at my look at my calendar um and it, or if there's some better way to coordinate let's do that um can you put your link in there so i can i don't think uh, i've got yep. it maybe i yeah, okay thank you yep cool um just uh just hit me up and, and we'll get together. Yeah. What, one other thing that I was going to suggest and, and, and Stuart, I really liked what you talked about progress. I mean, I mean, this to me gets at the governance and the meta conversation about what near books are about. And for me, what I'm interested in is how can you create exponential opportunities for accelerated learning about progressive causes? How can we, how can we ramp that up? To me, that is so sorely needed. So, so we need it. And, and, you know, you know, the, to me, there's, there needs to be a seismic shift, tidal wave, whatever metaphor you want to make, but we've got to get our act together and start accelerating learning because we're, there's so many forces taking us to the dark ages. Rather quickly. Um, yep. Real quick, real quick, I want to scroll back to Pete's demo. Uh, and I, I sat here and sort of cramped over the keyboard in the car. Um, I so Google has been offering these little help me do things smart way and I typed in create an editorial calendar to publish blog posts and then I clicked the create button and it did this nice this is just the starting point from one sentence of work and I'm like this is pretty damn good <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, I, I will elaborate this and change the names out for you know for us but I think this is pretty, pretty interesting. And I'm also thinking there'll be a second sheet in this page. One can be for blog posts and then one can be for Neo books in progress. And we can, we can sort of catalog some of them here and then reflect that on a page in the massive wiki. But I was blown away by how quickly and how elegantly this showed up. And I don't even use tables this well. So I've, I've got to figure out a couple of things about like it added filtering for any of the, the headings. It colored the headings a different color. It made some of the columns wide and some narrow, like a whole bunch of formatting stuff that that is really pretty nice. So, cool. Thought I'd show that. Beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, reducing the effort for people to do everything. Ah. Just um, to return the other point I was making, the issue of I know you've been thinking about it. I don't know how much it's been materializing, but actually coming up with a, a, a an a, you know a governance about near books. Uh, we sort of, I've heard little pieces about it, but how to pull something together that might galvanize people's contributions about a shared governance process. So. I think that's a great idea. I think Pete has lots of ideas and concerns about how governance and, and ownership work. Um, yeah. And I think we should probably go back to this next week and like make it a bigger topic yeah. as part of part of our yeah. conversations because it is, it is really important. And also, yeah, I mean, to, yeah. Also having some kind of agreement for how are we doing this together when we do when we collaborate and we, we um, yeah, exactly. mid, mid, midway through the pandemic we had a series of calls on something we call the generative commons agreement it did not wind up creating a generative commons agreement which was kind of the, the hope but uh, i think we turned over a lot of really good soil on this particular topic as well mm -hmm. right because is that the spirit in which neo books are kind of growing up Pete, anything you want to add to that uh, yeah, real quick, I, I was going to put a link to, um, uh, be, because I happen to be thinking about it, uh, the art, art, uh, NFT art marketplace, um, has a pretty well thought out, uh, set of, oh, cool, uh, governance stuff. Um, and they deal mm. with some, some things that we wouldn't have to, and they're also, they're, they're really doing blockchain DAO and um, legal entity. Um, their legal entity is uh, Republic of Meridus or something like that. Um, uh, because they've got participants all around the world, not because they're trying to hide. But anyway, I it's, it's only one small example of a governance mm -hmm. document. But thinking through the, um, I, I was reading, I actually, I found a bunch of typos, so I, I 
um, did a fork and, and uh, pull request back for a bunch of typo fixes. But even things like um, if we have a governing board that gets deadlocked, how do we break that? Um, if we, you know, if, if there isn't enough, or, or if there aren't enough community members voting, um, uh, how do we have a tiebreaker so we don't get stuck in a bunch of, in a weird situation? Um, very, very deep technical thing. I've got actually a lot broader, bigger, higher level governance ideas that Jerry, you and I have talked about and would love to chat more. Cool. Um, I would love to talk about uh, production process, markdown files and HTML and all that kind of stuff. But before that, I've got a suggestion. Um, uh, Klaus, I think, I think uh, your new book is for public consumption, not maybe not in the process um, of it yet, but uh, it's not private, I think. Um, I wonder if we can make an unlisted uh, GPT with your document as a corpus and, and start to play with that. Does that yeah. sound okay? Yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm, I, I, I added you know, these uh, couple of pages to it based on the comments from last meeting, you know, and uh, yeah. Uh, so, but I, I really would like to move on to volume two, which I, I, I really am, I, I, I have to you know, get into it and think about it. You know. um, uh, could we take uh, four or five minutes right now and get that GPT started? Would that be? Do you want to just do you want to just screen share and show us how? Yeah. Does that sounds sound great. like a good? Sounds like good use of our time. Waste of time. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So just let me throw out something, um, to tuck someplace, and that is um, our lack of quote diversity in terms of creating a governance structure. It's just exactly. Woo. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Um, uh, well, say that. Well, in the, I don't say that in the context of compliance. I say that in the context of we make it a much better product. Exactly. Have, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed with you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Wait, let, let's all ponder that as well and bring it back into our into our meetings. Um, go ahead, Pete. Uh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the the uh, I guess I will do it a little <laughs> bit. I I usually just skip this actually. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, this is where you chat with ChatGPT to make the the bot, which is kind of a meta weird thing, but um, something that helps people read and browse and understand the material in our book. Um, I have the uh, class, I have the book here. Uh, so food and agriculture. Yeah, that's volume one. Um, yeah, I wish I could, I could have done something with the graphics. I mean, I just picked uh, graphics from the available image sites, you know, but, uh, and I haven't played with the, with the software yet, with the toys. Uh, food and Agriculture Companion. I'm going to go with that. We can always change that later. Um, so now it's making a profile picture with Dolly 3. Um, I kind of wish, I, I don't know how to, I don't know where in this process you're supposed to upload your corpus. Um, but it's funny. I've I've done that same book shape <laughs> with a tree for <laughs> massive wiki. 
Um, Looks nice. How do you awesome. take Just... companion that that from What's companion that? is sort of uh, um... it's it's like a reading guide kind of it's there there are books named you know readers readers companion to the Bible okay. or to. Uh, we can change it. Yeah, just a quick reaction to the title. I just uh, interest in the rationale of, of calling it food and agricultural rather than agricultural and food. And companion seems a little soft, and uh, you know it doesn't it doesn't have a hook. Whereas you know Renaissance or something that um, you know companion doesn't you know doesn't doesn't hook me. That's all. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, quick. Quick ideas to change it. We don't need to get well, stuck would, on this either. No, no, I, mean, I, I think, was just saying agric agricultural and food, food renaissance or something that, you know, we, we need a renaissance in our agricultural and food the, policies. Um, the, it's not, this, it may not be relevant though. This title in particular is for the bot version of this book. Yes. So and this, the, this com companion the word is, companion is standard right now in the early lives of these bots. Okay. Um, we, we, and we could totally pick something else like assistant or readers, you know, helper or something like that. I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. So I, it, it was interesting. I was explaining this interface to somebody else earlier today. And this interface really helps people. ChatGPT is uh, OpenAI has done a, a fairly good job at kind of getting to the point of how are we going to help people chat with this bot. Um, so this interface where they've got a little picture and a, and a, a set of instructions about what this bot can do, and then some sample questions to get started. These are uh, these are completely edited by us. They don't have to be from ChatGPT. But anyway, all of this narrows you down to, oh, I get it. I'm talking about food and ag agriculture with a bot, and these are the kinds of questions I can ask. Can we the, say like food and agriculture in a changing climate? Uh, I, I would really suggest that we want to have something like bot here. Um, uh, does it, and does that make sense why? Or, or let me... Um, uh, let me grab a different thing. Um, uh, what I'm doing is going to grab, um, Uh, sorry, it's completely lost. Hang on. Uh, I'm going, going to go to a weird place, which is Twitter or X, I guess. Um, and we'll look at some just somebody said these are my favorite bots so far. Um, designer GPT, Spotify or Explorer GPT, Nomad GPT. So we could call it GPT, Grimoire GPT. Um, I guess these are. Do you want to so call it one, GPT? Uh, we could. I think that's going to be tired and old. So this one is interesting. This one doesn't have a, although it, actually this this means kind of bot already. Uh, let's click on another one. Hmm. Uh, the reason I'm doing this kind of weird thing is uh, OpenAI doesn't have a discovery mechanism yet. <laughs> um, uh, but this is what another typical bot looks like. I think it's this is going to be old really fast, but maybe not. Actually, I, this would be totally fine. So um, uh, I would pick something like food and agriculture GPT would be fine. Yeah. 
That seems, I mean, yeah, it's intuitive. And do you want to change that food and agriculture? Uh, anything like revolution or rena rena renaissance, all of that, it's like, that's not really why I'm here. I'm not here because there's a revolution. I already know that. What I'm really interested <laughs> in is the, um, is the contents of this book as it relates to me. Um, so we could say something like, uh, there is a renaissance. Uh, in, uh, we're going to change this, so don't don't worry too much. I don't know why it's called Food and Agriculture, but uh, it's like the Sierra Club Grassroots Networks called Food and Agriculture. It it just flows mm -hmm. that way. That's no problem. Unless you want it to be more specific, like regenerative agricultural and food. People don't really know yet what that is. <laughs> um, so this instructions part, uh, I, I'm actually going to leave this. ChatGPT wrote this for us. Um, we can give some some guidance about how we want the chat chatbot to act. Um, uh, assume the user is at a sixth grade leaving reading level yeah Uh, so as somebody as a as somebody comes to this thing, are there things that we want the chatbot to either emphasize or try to stay away from to to get as we get started with somebody? Um, yeah, I would say um, uh, translate spiral dynamics uh, um, into into a, a common language. You know, don't talk about orange and green and all because. That would just totally confuse people. But you can talk about uh, copings of people. You know, there are ways to to uh, define that. Um, so I'm going to say, um, uh, another thing I'm going to say is prompt the user for what they already know about ag agriculture and food and apply. To their life and context. Um, Okay, I'm gonna kill these. Uh, so what are some questions you would ask? If, if uh, let's pretend we're asking somebody like Klaus, an expert in food and agriculture, et cetera. Um, what are some questions we would ask Klaus or Klaus's knowledge? Um, uh, how... what, is the impact, what is the impact of climate change on, the, on food and agriculture? Um, I think that's a great one. And also a thing to notice is we we have a, I guess actually this is great. What is the impact of climate change on? That's great. Um, uh, how can we tell others what we know? Just for a brief, is this searching the book or is it searching everywhere in answering these questions? When you put the uh, it questions will do in? both. And okay. somehow I didn't, oh. Uh, I'm gonna do a weird thing in here and hit return. I think I've already uploaded the book even though it doesn't show on that. Uh, let me try it again. Um, 
Uh, it's got instructions to focus on the material of the book as it answers questions. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, if you ask it something completely off topic, and I, I did this to test, um, uh, if I ask it a Python question, it'll answer it'll give me an answer to a Python question, um, even though it's not in the book. But other if it's if it's you know so the this focusing funnel thing here, um, you know you need to know about food and agriculture. Ask me questions is helping you in life. So. And then these sample questions, these help funnel me to be asking about the book rather than about Python questions. So with this lead in, I'm not gonna ask Python questions. Just out um, of curiosity, could I, could I ask the question, uh, what has this book missed out on that needs to be included? So that you can, you know, we don't know what we don't know, so to speak. So can um, it go, do external searches? And, you know, look at the book and then look for where it needs uh, additional ideas. Uh, so I'm going to leave web browsing turned on and I guess I'll leave Dolly turned on. I haven't had much experience with GPTs using these yet. Okay. Um, uh, and let's see. So I've uh, tried that. Uh... Break. I, I I didn't get anything useful out of it. Um, That's good. <laughs> so one of the questions that 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 pops up for me is, are we asking these questions in services in service of quote? completing a publication or are we asking these questions in terms of taking the learning further and that the, might the that latter might... although okay. Great. so um uh to let me let me to to uh to go over it again uh to go over it again um in a year or two instead of reading a book you're going to go find the right bot to talk to and you're not going to read the book ever. You're mm -hmm. going to ask the bot, you know, okay, I need to, I, I actually do need to know about food and agriculture. Um, I'm going to ask you, and it's going to be reading the book for you. Um, so these questions, these are sample questions that a reader can ask, you know, maybe a different way to say that. Um, uh, I know my friend Joanne has read the book. Um, Joanne, I'll tell you what, I'm going to read the book. Don't worry about it. But can I ask you, you know, um, how does, uh, uh, what's the impact of climate change on, on food and agriculture? Can you tell me what the book said about that? That's the kind of question that we're asking here. Okay. Um, so in this interface, this is a preview of it. If I make changes over here, it's going to refresh this preview, but we can already use it. So, um, and I can just click on one of these questions. Uh, what is the impact of climate change on food and agriculture? So now uh, it's digesting the book and it's going to answer in Klaus's, you know, um, knowledge space, what's the impact of climate change on food and agriculture? Um, it has been instructed to call this instead of an uploaded file. It's been instructed to call this knowledge. So mm -hmm. when it says searching my knowledge, um, uh, it's actually reading the uploaded file. I apologize. I'm going to have to Hi, Jerry. bounce and I'll, I'll leave the call running. I'll just pass the con to Pete. Um, but this is cool. Thanks for doing all the, the demo and the work here. This is I'm learning a ton. So, have a good day. Well, that's the con. Thanks, guys. I'll be right back. There's there's a point that I want to make. <laughs> so now, just out of curiosity, is there a is there a limit on how much text it will generate and answer response to that? Is that's a very a... good question. I don't know. You can you um, can yeah. ask it. You can ask it to frame the response with eight hundred words. As an example, yeah. and it, you, know, then you can rewrite this whole thing and rewrite this into 400 words, for example, and it will do that. Cool. I, 
and maybe Rick, Rick might have had the other question, which is, okay, so Klaus's book has 100,000 words or whatever. How much of that is it actually reading to give us this answer? Um, I think I, uh, another one of their OpenAI's announcements was that they had a 128K token, which is kind of similar to words uh, context limit on their newest, newest version. I don't know that they're actually using that for this, but they've also got a bunch of techniques where they can use chunks of the book um, and make it into vector embeddings or whatever and do relevance operations and yada, yada. It's going to be looking at this whole book. And we could actually upload more more books too. Um, so, uh, so our job as a bot creator is to look at this and say, okay, our users asked this question, and the bot read the book and is giving this answer back to the user. Is this what we asked for here? Assume the user is at sixth grade reading level. And, um, try to explain complicated concepts simply. Um, I am not super happy with the, with the way it's done this. It, this looks fairly complicated to me. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to could tune you, this a could little you bit. Put a, could you prompt that, whatever's produced there, to because it looks above a sixth grade reading level. Maybe yeah, it is. I don't know. I, I didn't do a good job spelling sixth grade. It says sixth okay. grade. Okay. So, uh, so one thing I want to fix right away is... You know, and actually, maybe I don't even want to assume. Um, uh, I I think it works pretty well with twelve year old. Um, uh, I'm also going to say uh, answer uh, answer questions with short. sentences i'll tell you i'll just tell a very quick story about what kent told me about when i spoke with him when he was dealing with his 14 year old son who was having to read the constitution for an exam and he had very little interest to do it um and so he set him up with a a, a bot to allow him to make inquiries about it yeah. and he got engaged so the big difference is 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 the agency of the learner and that they're driving the inquiry process, which is a yeah. very different. And and the following morning, he said he tested his son on what he learned, and he was impressed with the fact that it was it, it 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 you know, reading a book can be kind of you know, particularly if you're not interested in it or don't want to read it. But if you have a way of capturing something quickly, I, I think it's got huge potential actually, and activating inquiry, and a learning mindset and more open mindedness. So. Um, I completely oh. agree. And I had that experience, um, even with the, the single transcript bot that I set up, I was there for the call. I listened to the call, I got a lot out of it. And I sent had a bunch of mental um, notes to myself, go back and re listen to this call, look for next steps, go back and re listen to this call and talk about the prospects for peace. Um, uh, having the, the bot and being able to ask those questions meant that I didn't have to re-listen to the whole call. And exactly. it, it recalled, you know, parts of the call that I had I hadn't accessed, didn't have access to because it, there was so much material, right? It's only 13,000 mm -hmm. words, but but 13,000 words is a lot of stuff to absorb. There was a exactly. lot of emotionality too and things like that. So the the bot, I was really surprised, but the bot was a really good interface to you know even mm -hmm. a tiny corpus like thirteen thousand words. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, has anybody read the overstory? I have not. The overstory, mm -hmm. no. um, Pulitzer Prize winner, two thousand eighteen, Richard Powers. Um, it's a it's a it's a <laughs> a work of fiction about trees. And the artistry in the writing is just extraordinary. And so I'm just thinking in terms of, and I'm not, I'm not saying good or bad. I'm saying, you know, Jesus, what are we, what, what's, what are the implications for the incredible artistry of, of, of the written word, you know, based upon on, on, on what we're talking about. And, and there's a huge emotional impact that comes out of this book. Um, 
At least that's my my experience of it. Um, and I'm only halfway through it. So um, it's just a really interesting to think about this uh, and, and the implications of it for for learning, for the artistic process, for the gestalt of the the teacher, which is what a reader is or a, an artist, a visual artist. I mean, just wow. <laughs> it is wow. Total wow. <laughs> and not only that, if you had, if, go ahead. One of the things I've, Sorry, one of the things I really appreciate, I, and you're right, Stuart, it's a big deal. Um, one of the things I, and, and the metaphor I have is, remember when people used to make furniture by hand and it was beautiful and it was a work of art. Yeah. So now you can go buy a piece of furniture at Ikea for 50 bucks or whatever. Um, it's not a work of art, <laughs> um, but everybody can buy, you know, millions of, of copies of the furniture. So I don't know what's yeah, and you can still go to a fine art, you know, furniture store and and find a craftsman who's and now he has to charge more, or she has to charge more because her her you know her her ability to sell it now she's selling to um, art aficionados and not people who just need furniture. The the thing that I really appreciate with especially for me mid journey, um, but also with with ChatGPT is the interactivity. Back to what Rick was saying, interacting with art. Exactly. Um, uh, is just like I've learned so much art history and art knowledge over my you know six months with Mid Journey that I would never have had access to. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing because I'm actually doing art that's a lot of times better than the artists could have done, um, mm -hmm. you know, 100 years, 200 years ago. Um, or I can do more of it, or I can do it in lots of different ways. I can you know look at it from lots of different angles. So that that interactivity with a creative space is it it you know it it's it raises the bar from you know i'm looking at a painting in a museum to i've like thought through this painting in tons of different ways and i've made exactly. the cubist version of it and, and the impressionist version of it and you know zoomed out zoomed in so it's i there there is that thing where a you know, like the overstore, it sounds like a beautiful work of art, right? And you do want to have people have those emotional engagements with like real human generated art. Um, so this doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we can't do that, but it, it means that we won't do it maybe as much as we should. Yeah, I mean, and, and also as, as I think about it, you know, so, so, you know, many of us thought that, you know, one of the, Key concepts in in um, in education and in, in transformation um, in shifting people's perspective is how do we how do we educate in a fast way a, a huge segment exactly. of the population to think differently yeah. and yeah. and and so if you give a skeptic let's say you know this tool to be able to drill down well what about this and what yeah. about this and what about this it's a beautiful vehicle to be able mm -hmm. to do that yeah yeah. So, so once again, it's back to the idea that, you know, okay, we've got this great tool. How do we use it? How do we use it for good? Mm -hmm. Whatever that is. <laughs> exactly, Stuart. I'm going to have to go, but uh, I agree with you entirely. How can, we how can we create learning experiences that liberate people from the reductionist, dichotomous, uh, emotionally reactive, mindless sort of, <laughs> you know, situations where they actually can regain sovereignty over their over their induct and overcome their indoctrinations absolutely yeah but they said it on fox news or msnbc <laughs> they said it they said it. <laughs> yeah um, anyway this, I, this I, i've got a scoop it. was great this this works so um i'm going to post the link to this in uh Manimus. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.